Shalom, Yashallah. It's Brother Mapathot. Um, that'll be key, but in the ancient Paleo Hebrew. And this is gonna be a um a video, right? I was just um meditating on Acts chapter 15, right? And I want to deal with a couple points, right? A couple things that's going on in this chapter, right? Um, chiefly dealing with the apostles teaching um grace, you understand. Right, so we're going to dive right into this thing, but, but before we go into it, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Most High God, whose name is Yahweh, and the name of His only begotten Son, um, Yahweh Shai, who the world would ignorantly call Jesus Christ. And um, yeah, let's dive right into this thing. We're going to just read it from the top. So, like, bear with me. So, this is the book of Acts, chapter 15, and verse 1, and it reads. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Right. So you had Jews telling the um the um, Israelite foreigners, except they be circumcised, they can't be saved. Right. And it says, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, meaning Paul and Barnabas had a, um, a heated argument with these Jews. Right. And it says, and they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem and to the apostles and elders about this question. Right. So they told Paul and Barnabas to kind of go up to Jerusalem and go to the apostles. Right. Go to Peter and go to James. Right. And, and these different elders. Right. And it says. And um, I want to jump to the point verse. I'm jump to verse five and it says. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed. So this is this is um yeah verse five, which believed, saying that it was needful to. So you had these you had Pharisees that actually believed in Yahweh Shai, right? But it says, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses, right? So the Pharisees like all right, even though they're Israelite foreigners, even though they're foreigners coming to the um coming into this knowledge. We feel like they got to keep the laws of Moses, right? Or they're not going to make it, right? Basically trying to keep them under the law, right? And it says in verse six, it says, And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, you know how that a good while ago, the Most High God made choice among us that the Gentiles, talking about the Israelite foreigners, by my mouth, right? He's going into the account with him speaking to um when he had the dream, right? And he ended up meeting up with Cornelius. So this is what he's speaking about. It says, you know how that a good while ago, the most high God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe, right? And it says, and the most high, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them going into the same thing when you read about Paul saying, um, there's neither Jew nor Greek. That's the same thing that Peter is going into. There's no difference between us and them. Right. And it says purifying their hearts by faith. Right. So they were purified by their faith in Yahweh Shai. Right. Now, we know and this is the point. Right. This is the point. It says now, therefore, why tempt ye the most high to put a yoke? Right. He's speaking about the law, a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear. Right. So he's saying he's calling the y'all Salaki, the law, a yoke. Right. Because they're trying to put these these new um these brothers that's new into the um the faith right under the law. Hey, I got to keep all these laws. They are not going to be saved. Right. But um. But I'm going to read on. It's going to bring out the point. So this is Peter speaking. Remember, this is Peter speaking, who is directly taught by the Lord, right? And um, who's the um the head of the church? You understand? So it says, I'm going to read verse 10 again, because that's a heavy point. And it says, now, therefore, why tempt ye the most high God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So he's telling them, hey. Nobody's going to be able to be saved by the law because we can't keep the law perfectly, right? When you're trying to be saved by the law, it becomes a yoke, right? So it says, verse 11, but we believe that through grace of the, through the grace of the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, we shall be saved even as day. So Peter is teaching grace, right? So we have to teach grace in these last days, right? 
And um, we're gonna read on and show that he's not saying we don't, we're not, we shouldn't keep the law, but he's saying, hey, we can't be under the law and seek to be justified by the law. He's basically going into the same thing that Peter, that Paul teaches in his epistles, right? So it says that, but we believe through the through that through grace of the Lord Yahweh Shai Mashiach, we shall be saved even as day. Let me get a quick precept. Right? I kind of ain't got nothing written down, just going through the spirit, because I feel like this is a heavy chapter. Right? Because I feel like um um a lot of um Israelites, right, in these last days, we get caught up in law, 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 or die, law or die. And we don't teach enough Yahweh Shai. Right? So this is the book of Ephesians, chapter two and verse nine. Right, we don't teach enough grace. Right, we can't be scared to teach grace because we feel like we sound like Christians. Hey, that's the doctrines of the that's the doctrine of the Bibles. Salaki, like that's the doctrine of the scriptures, the Bible. Right, that's what the apostles of Yahweh Shai was teaching. Right, so we can't get caught up in, in oh, we're gonna sound like a Christian if we pull these verses. We're gonna sound like a Christian if we go into Galatians five, if we go into Romans five. Hey, we just gotta break it down the correct way, man. Right. So this is the book of Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. And it reads, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of the Most High God. So like Peter said, um, Paul said the same thing. We're saved through grace, right? Through the faith in Yahweh Shai. Right? So let's go back to Acts 15. So this is the um, book of Acts 15 and verse... Um, I'm going to read verse 11 again. It says... But we believe that through the grace of the Lord, Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, we shall be saved even as day. So the, hey, he called the law a yoke. Don't try to put the loke on, I mean, Salakia, this yoke on these Israelite foreigners that just came out of all matters of folly, living like these damn nasty Grecians, man. Right? That's not realistic to feel like they're going to be able to keep all these laws overnight. Right? So that's why he's calling it a yoke. He said, hey, they got grace. You understand? And it says, so, um... Just on the um, modern day um, way of kind of going into it, you don't want to be that brother on the highways and byways when you're dealing with a brother or sister, right? And you're telling them, hey, yeah, you gotta, we got to keep all 613 laws or we're going to be put to death, right? That's going to kind of be a yoke to them, man. They might, they might kind of walk away, right? They kind of don't know what's going on. You tell them they got to keep 613 laws, hey, they're going to walk away, right? So let's see how the apostles got down. We're going to read on. And um, I'm going to jump to verse... Um, let's jump to verse 19, right? Still dealing with the same, the same context, right? And it says, and this is James speaking now, right? So we went from Peter saying these things. Now this is James speaking, right? So this is the book, this is the Acts 15 and verse 19. It reads, wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles, which is the Israelite foreigners, are turned to God. So now James is saying the same thing. Yeah, I feel like we shouldn't trouble them because they're just now coming into the faith, right? We don't want to trouble them by telling them, hey, you got to keep 613 laws or you're going to be put to death, right? If you don't keep all of these laws, you're going to die, right? That would be unrealistic, man, right? They're just coming out of um, eating pork, um, probably um, damn homosexuality, all matters of fornication and idol worship. And you think overnight they're going to um, be able to keep 613 laws, right? That's going to sound like a yoke and a burden unto them. Right, so you have to be realistic and, and, and don't frustrate the grace of Yahweh Shai. And this is what the apostles were teaching. Right? And how much more of us? We're supposed to be disciples of Yahweh Shai. Let me get this real fast in Galatians. Um, chapter 2 and verse 21. Right? And it reads, I do not frustrate the grace of the most high God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Yahweh Shai is dead in vain. So if you're seeking to be um um, to be justified by keeping the law perfectly, hey, that means Yahweh Shai died in vain because Yahweh Shai died because we fell short of the law, right? And we're going to continue to fall short of the law because we're in these corruptible bodies, right? So if righteousness came by the law, then Yahweh Shai, hey, he, 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 um, he got crucified in vain, right? But righteousness doesn't come by the law. Righteousness comes by um, grace through faith, right? So this is what our, um, our the apostles are teaching, man, right? So this is the book of Acts chapter 15 and verse, I'm going to read 19 again. It says, and it's James speaking once again. It says, wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. Right? Talking about the Israelite foreigners. In verse 20, it says, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols. Right? So he's giving them laws. 
right? So he said, um, stay away from the pollutions of idols, right? No idol worship and from fornication, right? So no fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So they gave them um, these chief um, laws for them, basically like a starter pack. For an example, if you're all in the highways and byways, you got a, um, a brother coming up to you, right? You don't want to um, hit that brother with all 613 laws, right? And, and you, you, hey, you got to teach that brother that he has grace, right? He have mercy through the blood of Yahweh Shai, right? And then you hit that brother with a starter pack, just like the apostles did, right? And you might tell that brother, hey, brother, um, no more pork, brother, right? Hey, brother, you can't lay with another man's wife, brother. That, that's adultery, right? You might tell that brother, hey, brother, get you a pair of fringes. You understand? Right? You might hit that brother with three three laws for a starter pack. Like like um James said, he gave him four. Right? So it says that but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. So now when you get that brother that starter pack, hey brother, get you some fringes, no adultery, no um laying with another man's wife or lusting upon another man's wife, right? And no pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, brother. Right, you give them the dietary law, you give them the fringe law, and you give them uh, no adultery. Right, and ultimately, if the spirit, because that's that's the thing, and that's what the apostles understood, it's ultimately through the spirit of the Lord to give a brother the increase. You understand? No matter you can you can hit somebody with uh, all six hundred and thirteen laws, and they go home and let, and let it go in one ear and out the other, and not follow one of them, man. Right, but if the spirit is resting upon his brother, he's gonna go read for himself. He's gonna go um today on the um. Today, right, he's going to go read for himself, right? He's going to go watch the videos, right? Hey, he's going to, and ultimately the spirit is going to sup with him and he's going to understand, okay, I have to keep this law. I have to keep this law. You understand? So this thing, this ministry is spiritual, right? And that's what the apostles understood. We're going to just give him the starter pack and if the Lord gives him the increase, all praises to the most high, right? Let's get that in 1 Corinthians 3. Um, 1 Corinthians 3. In verse, let's get straight to the point, verse 6. So this first Corinthians is the 3 and verse 6. And it reads, um, I have planted, right? So like um, Peter said, hey, I plant, right? Peter might give you, uh, might give him the understanding of Yahweh Shai on the cross, whatever it may be, right? And he says, in, in Apollo's water. So pa Apollo might give him a few, a, a brother, a few laws, right? After he learned about the grace and mercy of Yahweh Shai. But this is the point. And it says, but the most high God gave the increase. So you can plant that seed. And if the Lord, and it's all to the Lord, the grace of the Lord, right? Whether that, that person is increasing the spirit, right? In verse seven, it says, so then neither is he that plants of anything, neither he that watereth, right? But the most high God that giveth the increase, right? So it's ultimately up to the most high God to give a brother or sister the increase to the spirit, right? So that's why when you, um, you want to teach like the apostles. We have to teach grace, man. Right? Don't feel like you're a Christian because you're teaching grace. That's the doctrine of the Bible. That's the doctrine of Yahweh Shai. You understand? Um, and that's the spirit. Let me uh, see if I can find this precept. Um, I believe it's um, let me see. I'm gonna look at my sword real fast. Bear with me, Yashallah. Um Let me see if I can find this real fast. I believe it's second John. Come on, let's go into it. Second John. One and verse. Um, this is second John chapter one and verse nine, and it reads, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Yahweh Shai have not the most high God. Right? So we gotta abide in the doctrine of Yahweh Shai. And it says, And he that abideth in the doctrine of Yahweh Shai, he have both the Father and the Son. You see that? That's the doctrine of Yahweh Shai, man. Right? Him crucified, right? Grace, you understand? Us being saved through his blood. Um, let's go back to Acts 15. Right? So we just read about um Peter and James both saying the same thing. Hey, if these if these brothers and sisters are just coming out the world, we can't just put them under the law like that, man. Right? Hey, you shouldn't be telling nobody, hey, yeah, you, if you, you're not gonna make it if you don't keep these laws. Right, you kind of tell them, yeah, 613 laws we gotta keep, not 10, and you're not gonna <coughs> so lucky, and you're not gonna make it if you don't keep them. Hey, that's not what our that's not what the apostles was teaching. You understand? That's what the damn Pharisees was teaching, man. 
right? But the apostles of Yahweh Shai, right? The disciples of Yahweh Shai, we're supposed to be teaching grace, right? And we're going to go down to verse 29, right? Salakia. I believe it's 29 I want. Um, so like it, bear with me. Yeah, this is what I want right here. Verse 28, it says, um, for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit. And this is a, um, this is speaking to the Israelite foreigners. Once again, this, this whole chapter is speaking to the, is, um, chiefly about the Israelite foreigners, right? So it says for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Right, so they even said it was good to the spirit. So this is not them winging it. You understand? They're speaking through the spirit. So it says, "For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things." Right. So they keep calling. Um, we don't want to put a burden on y'all because we understand y'all fresh out of the world. Y'all fresh out of all matters of wickedness and um idolatry. Right. So it says, "For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit." And to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things that ye abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication. So they gave him a starter pack, man. Right. They gave him a starter pack. So you're not going to. Um, I'm going to keep putting it in modern day terms so brothers can kind of get what's going on. Right. So, for example, you might be on the highways and byways. You might be teaching somebody in your family. Maybe you're not on the highways and byways yet. Right, but you're teaching your sister, you're teaching your cousin. You can't tell them. Well, you shouldn't tell them. But yeah, we gotta keep 613 laws. Yeah, that's the only way we're gonna be saved. Right? Because when you first come into this truth, that's what you might think, you understand. Right? Because hey, we gotta teach more grace in these last days so our brothers and sisters can understand um what um how we supposed to deal with the next brother and sister. Right? So it can't just be you gotta keep 613 laws or you're gonna die, right? Because we're not the disciples of Moses. We're not the Pharisees, right? Um, so it says, um, to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. And, and your brother or sister that you're teaching, they're fresh out of the road from smoking weed, all matters of fornication, right? Probably, um, hey, man, you could go on and on. He probably caught a body, right? He probably was robbing people all his life. And you think you're going to just tell that man, hey, all right, you want to learn this truth? You got to keep 613 laws or you're not going to make it in the chariot. Right, but you gotta. That, hey, that's not realistic, man. That brother got a, all matters of folly and wickedness on his mind because he just came out of the world, right? And even us, we don't. Even us, that's in this truth, we don't keep all six hundred thirteen laws, man. That's 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 be real, let's be realistic, man. So there's no way we should be trying to tell other people, yeah, six hundred thirteen laws that we gotta keep, man. Right? That's off, right? Because I I could tell you straight up right now, hey. I don't have the money to um wear all 100% um clothing. You understand? Hey, some brothers don't have the um the money to separate from their ribs when they're on their um menstrual cycle, man. Right? Hey, we're not there's a lot of laws that we're not keeping. Right? So we're all counting on grace and we have to understand that. Um so it says, I'm going to read I'm going to start from verse 28 again. It says, "For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meats offered to idols." And from blood and from things strangled and from fornication. You see that? So that's that starter pack, right? For I'm gonna go into this example again, right? I'm just trying to make this thing plain, right? You might be dealing with a sister, right? You're teaching her, right? You might tell her, hey sister, you gotta you go to Deuteronomy 22, hey sister, you gotta um you gotta try to um wear a dress, right? Try your hardest to try to wear a dress, right? Stay away from pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, right? And um you can't be a tailbearer, sister. You can't be on the phone gossiping all day, right? Hey, and you can't be an adulteress, right? You can't be a whore. You can't be a harlot, whatever, however you may word it. You understand? Hey, you get that sister that, that started pack, and if it's if it is and if it's the Lord's will, he'll give her the increase and she'll learn more, right? All through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. But you can't just hit that sister with um you gotta keep six hundred laws, right? That's not realistic. So that's what the apostles was teaching. Right. So um, it says. Um, verse thirty. Um, no, that's the that's that's all I wanted on that. That's the point, right? So we're saved by grace, right? We're not saved 
by the law. That's hard for a lot of brothers and sisters in this truth to really understand and bear because they hear so much law, law, law. But that's not the doctrine, right? The understanding, right? Of, of of grace that's not what they are the apostles and the disciples were teaching they taught grace right they taught grace and yes we have to keep the law right so let me get this real fast so that was the whole point of them giving them a starter pack because they felt like hey and this if it's the lord's will and the spirit they'll learn more laws as they go right because they were teaching the law every sabbath man you had Jews teaching the law every Sabbath in the synagogues. So if it was the Lord's will, they were going to learn more laws as they um, increased in this thing. All right. So I'm going to bring this out real fast. This is Galatians 2. I'm going to read. I'm going to start from 16. Galatians 2 and 16. And it reads, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Even we have believed in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. That we might be justified by the faith of Yahweh Shai and not by the works of the law. Right? And brothers got to bring these lessons out a lot in these last days because a lot of brothers and sisters can't really fully, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, 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 understand it, right? Just for lack of better terms, they can't fully understand grace, right? Right? And we have to understand grace. We can't allow. Yahweh Shai to be a stumbling block unto us. Right? So it says that, it says, but by the faith of Yahweh Shai, it says, Salakia, that we might be justified by the faith of Yahweh Shai and not by the works of the law. Right? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And you know why no flesh is going to be justified by the work of the law? Because we all fall short of the law. Right? And if you fall short of one law, you fall short of all the laws. Right? So you will be a fool. To be try to um to try to be justified by the law, right? And this is the point I really wanted. Well, it, it all makes the point, right? So um Galatians two and seventeen. But if while we seek to be justified by Yahweh Shai, right? So we we seek to be justified by the faith, right? By the grace, it says, and we ourselves are found sinners, meaning we're continually um willfully breaking the law, right? It says. Is therefore Yahweh Shai the minister of sin? God forbid. Right? So just because we seek to be justified by grace, it doesn't mean we can willfully sin. You understand? So even right now, um, brothers might be in, um, be sinning constantly right now without actually knowing, but they're not willfully sinning. But as the Most High God give you the increase, you read the law more, you realize, oh, I was sinning. Right? Let me go, let me go and repent. Right? You kind of read the, the law a little more. Oh, I was going off. Let me go and repent. You understand? So that's the hey, that's that's grace, right? We get to we get to repent because of the blood of Yahweh Shai, right? But I want to touch on the point that I was bringing out earlier about um why we can't be justified by the law. Um, let's go to James two and verse number ten, and it reads, "For whosoever shall keep the whole law, right? So you might a brother might be able to keep the whole law." And yet offend in one point and then he go off one time. He is guilty of all. So if you hey you might keep the whole law and then at one time you go off, you you a debtor to the whole law. You understand? <clears throat> so verse eleven it says, For he's he that said do do not commit adultery, said also do not kill. Now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor of the law. You see that? That's plain. So it says, so speak ye and so and, and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty, which is talking about grace. For he shall have judgment without mercy that have showed no mercy and mercy rejoice against judgment. But the point is, hey, if you if you if you um transgress the law once, hey, you are debtor to the whole law and you still need Yahweh Shai. So you'll be a fool to frustrate the grace of the Lord. Right. Let's get another precept. Um, so this is the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 1 and verse 9. And it reads, Who have I'm gonna start from um I'm gonna start from 9, right? It says, Who have saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, 
which was given us in Yahweh Shai before the world began, right? So ultimately, hey, you're going to be saved by grace, right? And hey, and you were, um, and it's the gift of the Most High God, because those that, that that the Lord is going to be gracious unto and um and, and saved, they were already preordained from the foundation of, of the world to be saved, right? So it's really according to the, the um the Most High God's purpose and grace, man. Right? I want to get another one, and I believe it's Titus three. And um, let me see where I want to start. Um, I'm gonna start from. Bear with me. I'm gonna start from three. It says this Titus three and three. It says, "For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another." So we were all in all matters of folly and wickedness in the world. But it says, but after that, the kindness and love of the Most High God, our Savior, toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. So not by our own flesh, but according to his mercy, he has saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, which he shed on us abundantly through Yahweh Shai, our Savior. You see that? So it says not by works of righteousness, right? But but um, um I'm gonna read it again. It says, but according to his mercy he saved us, right? Now I'm gonna read verse six again, which he shed on us abundantly through Yahweh Shai, our Savior, right? In verse seven it reads, that being justified by his grace, you see that we're justified by grace, right? We have to understand this. We're justified by grace. It says that by being that being justified by his grace, we should be heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Right. All through grace. You understand? It's all through grace. And um, I'm going to read this. I'm going to read another precept just to touch on this point again, because sometimes Jake gets simple. OK, grace. So that, is he saying I don't have to keep the law, even though I already put a precept earlier to show we still have to keep the law to the best of our ability. Right. And the ones that we're not ignorant of. Right. You can't willfully sin. Um, we're still saved by grace, ultimately, because we are debtors of the law. So this is Romans six and verse one. And it says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So shall we shall we continue in sin since we have grace? And in verse two, it says the most high forbid, meaning hell. No, just because you have grace doesn't mean you willfully sin. I'm not going to go willfully smoke a blunt. I'm not going to go willfully lay with another brother's wife. Just because um, I understand that we're under grace. That's wicked. So that's the point. It says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That's plain. So you can't willfully sin just because you're under grace. Right? So let's go to 2 Timothy 2. So this is the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. And it reads, thou therefore my son... Be strong in the grace that is in Yahweh Shai. So we have to be strong in our grace, man. We have to love the fact that we have a grace period, right? That means we have to continue to repent, man, right? Thank the Lord for the mercy and grace that he bestowed upon us, man, right? Be strong in the grace that you have in Yahweh Shai. Don't be foolish and, and forget Yahweh Shai and feel like you could be saved um, yourself, man, right? Don't be foolish, man. Don't fall into that trap of... um thinking you're going to be saved by the law, right? Law, 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 right? You're not going to be saved by the law. And you can't be teaching other brothers and sisters that they have to keep all the laws or they're going to die, man, right? Get another precept. So this is the book of uh, Galatians chapter five and verse four. So it's important we teach the same things that the apostles was teaching, which is grace and, and teaching people about our Lord and Savior, right? About Yahweh Shai. Right. That's what our people really want to hear about. They want to hear about They want to hear about the Lord. Right. And if they if their spirit bear witness with the Lord and the Lord abides in them, hey, the Lord is going to give them that increase. Right. So this is the book of Galatians, chapter five and verse four. And it reads, Yahweh Shai has become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. And if you got that law, 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 I'm going to be saved. I'm going to save myself by keeping the law perfectly mindset. Hey, Yahweh Shai has become no effect unto you. You understand? Ye are fallen from grace 
and that's a, that's scary words. Cause if you fall from grace, a, you're gonna be put to death, man. Right? Cause that's the, once you if you fail from grace, that means you feel like you don't need Yahweh Shai. The, the second you feel like you can be saved the law by the law is the second you really deep down in your heart you don't believe in Yahweh Shai and you don't really care about the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. Right? So we have to understand these things. And bear with me. I was just thinking of a precept I wanted to bring out, right? I was just thinking of a precept. I want to bring this. I want to bring out. I kind of forgot about it. I'm gonna read, let me read this again, right? So this is um, Galatians 5 and 4. It says, Yahweh Shai has become of no effect unto you whosoever are justified by the law, right? And if you're justified by the law, Yahweh Shai become of no effect unto you. That's heavy, man. And it says, ye are fallen from grace, man. Right? And that's a scary precept, man. You don't want to fall from grace, man. Right? And I kind of can't think of this precept. Um, so with that, um, Lord willing, brothers and sisters, um, got the understanding. Right? Understand what the apostles was teaching. Right? And we have to follow after the um, things that the apostles was teaching. Right? We have to teach grace. And we have to teach our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, right? And I really want to remember this precept. And um, Salake, bro, with me. Kind of flip through the pages real fast. I just had this precept on my mind. Um, but this is all through the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord probably didn't want me to bring it out, right? Probably already made the point. And yeah, I probably, the Lord probably, the Spirit said I probably pretty much already made the point. So with that, I want to say Shalom, Yasha Allah. Right, Lord willing, brothers and sisters got the understanding. Don't let our Lord and Savior be a, um, a stumbling block unto us. Right, don't let grace be a stumbling block unto us, man. Right? Let me see if that's a, um, if I can find that. I believe that's in Romans 9. Yeah, let me bring this out. I want to bring this out. I don't think it's the precept I was thinking about, but I want to bring this out anyway. Um, bear with me. Con, this is the book of Romans chapter 9 and verse 31, and it reads, uh, I'm going to start from 30. It says, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness has a, have attained unto righteousness, even the righteousness which is a, which is of faith. And this is talking about the Israelite foreigners through faith in Yahweh Shai, they still attain the, they still obtain righteousness, right? It says, but Israel, right, We're talking about the Israelites that knew who they were, right, which follow after the law of righteousness, have not attained to the law of righteousness, right? Because they fell short of the law, man, right? Because if you break one law, you are debtor to the whole law. Right. So you can't be found righteous by the keeping of the law. And it says, wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. So they didn't have faith in Yahweh Shai. They just sought to be justified by their own works. And that's the spirit. Right. I guess the Lord did it. The Lord did want me to bring out this other precept. Right. Because it kind of came back to my mind. And it says, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. And that stumbling stone is Yahweh Shai. Right. Which causes a lot of brothers and sisters to stumble even to this day. You understand? Because they can't fully um, understand grace. Right? And 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 that's the point of this lesson. I don't want my brothers and sisters to um to stumble on Yahweh Shai, man. Right? So it says, as it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense, speaking about Yahweh Shai, and whosoever believed for him should not be ashamed. And real fast, before I get that other precept. Another, I got another precept that just kind of popped in my mind. I want to bring out. So this is the book of First Peter, chapter two and verse. Um, let's see where I want to start at. Um, I'm gonna start from four. It says, "To whom coming, as unto a living stone, disallow indeed of men, but chosen of the Most High God and precious." Right, speaking about our Lord. It says, "He also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house." Speaking about Israel. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Most High God by Yahweh Shai HaMashiach. Wherefore, it also is contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth for him shall not be confounded. Talking about Yahweh Shai. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. Right? So when you believe on Yahweh Shai, he is precious. 
right? Because you understand the grace, right? You understand the importance of Yahweh Shai. So he's precious unto you. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallow, the same is made the head of the corner, right? Talking about Yahweh Shai. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, right? So those, to, the, to those that stumble at the word, right? And he becomes a stumbling block unto them, man. Huh? Right, it says, whereunto also they were appointed and on a deeper level. The Lord said that's where they were appointed. They were predestined to um, stumble at the teachings of Yahweh Shai, right? To stumble at grace and faith, right? Um, so let me get this other preset real fast. And I'm going to close out with this because the reason why I wanted to bring this out earlier because I was touching on the point that a lot of brothers come into this truth and, um, and, they, they feel like they could be justified by the works of their flesh, right? You have brothers teaching that you can be perfectly, um, you can perfectly keep the law, which, which we can't, right? Right, which we can't. And um, we also can't be teaching our brothers and sisters that they have to keep 613 laws because, hey, coming fresh out of the road is not possible. You understand? It's not possible, man. And that's what the apostles were teaching. And Acts 15, which is what we started off this lesson with, right? So the point is, um, I'm going to just bring this up, right? This Galatians chapter 3 and verse 2, and it reads, This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. So how did you receive the Spirit of the Lord, right? Was it by the works of the law or was it by the hearing of faith? It was by the hearing of faith. Because when you first accepted this truth, you weren't keeping the law, right? When you first heard this word and you let it abide in you, you weren't keeping the law. You didn't have one fringes. You probably had a damn um, a blunt in your mouth while you was getting the truth, man. Right? You probably was eating a damn bacon cheeseburger, right? You probably had another man's wife in your bed while you watching the damn um, the damn breakdown, right? So it says, this only would I learn of you receive you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. That's a rhetorical question. You receive the spirit by the hearing of faith. And um, this, this, this is a heavy point. Verse 3, it says, Are ye so foolish? Right? So Paul said, Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the law? Right? So don't be this foolish brother or this foolish sister in the last days that begun by the Spirit, and now you say, forget the Spirit, and you're trying to be justified by your own works. Right? Saying that you can keep the law 100%. You understand? Don't be this foolish brother or sister. We have to um, abide in the grace of Yahweh Shai, right? Meaning we understand that we can't keep the law perfectly. And that's why we need our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shai. And we understand that we're saved through the blood of Yahweh Shai. We can't be saved by our own works, man. Right? And Lord willing, this is edifying. Lord willing, brothers and sisters got the understanding. Don't let our Lord and Savior be a stumbling block unto you, man. Right. Um, abide in that grace. You understand? Don't frustrate the grace that we get through the death and the blood of our Lord and Savior, our King Yahweh Shai, man. Right. Thank the Most High God for the mercy. Right. And um, for the um, sacrifice of Yahweh Shai. Right. And with that, I want to say Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor and glory to the Most High God. Yahweh Shai. Shalom. Yashallah.